Oh gosh, I guess I'm first. <laughs> um, my name is Michelle. I'm the youngest of the grandkids. And um, actually, while everybody was speaking, I remembered something. Being young, being the baby, I really didn't know what my grandfather did. Um, but now I kind of realize that. But being little, we would go visit our grandparents. And I would come in and my grandfather would have those big headsets. Now we have those little tiny earbuds, but big headsets. And I thought it was just to drown us out. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but, you know, I heard things like graceful, gracious, kind, giving. These are all the words, a gentleman. Um, my grandfather was all that and then some. Um, he used to take us to church, St. Clair's. It's kind of boring, but um, for me, <laughs> being young. But... Um, I just remember my grandfather and all the great things that he did. We would go to the cabin, go out on his boat, go fishing. Uh, he taught me how to do stained glass. I have, still have the fish till this day. So um, thank you everybody for speaking and honoring him. It was a privilege to hear your stories. And I'm going to pass that over to my brother. My name is John. I'm his namesake, and uh, I'm a big crybaby, so if I start crying, I'm really sorry. But um, thank you all for coming. It's, it's a great honor to be here. Um, I have to say, listening to Bill's story about being in tune, my grandfather had a Porsche, and it was a really fun car. But this is how in tune his ear was. He would shut the door, and it would go ding. You see, hear that? That's E flat. And that's amazing. <laughs> the other thing about my grandfather is, as you know, he was a very quiet man. But he was somebody who had, I never once in my life hear a swear word. I've never once seen him get angry. Not once. He was dangerous to be around working. I picked up all his carpentry skills and we built a lot of things together. I almost lost a few fingers in the process. But uh, <laughs> uh, he took me flying for the first time when I was about nine years old in Big Bear. And we were flying around, and I, I'm a talker, I want to ask about every gauge in there. And he turned to me and said, would you be quiet? I can't hear the tower. <laughs> so <laughs> he brought us down here a few times, walked around here. But um, he was quite a remarkable man, and I'm proud to carry his name. And um, thank you again. I appreciate this. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer, and I'm the second granddaughter to John. And on behalf of my family, I'd like to thank you all for coming to honor our grandfather. It makes me proud to see you all here and to pay your respect and show us just how much John Palladino has touched each of your lives. It seems apparent by the tremendous effort put forth for this gathering that this man made so many remarkable impressions on, this, on all of us. He was a man of great diversity and mastered all that he set his mind to do. He wore many hats in my opinion, and, and not just in my opinion, but our grandfather, just because he was determined and he wore them with respect and morality. Our grandpa John was very humble and did not brag about his work, nor did he bring it home. His focus was his devotion to his family and church. He was so patient with each and every one of us. I feel his noteworthy attributes to our family were his quiet reverence for constant knowledge and a non-judgmental demeanor. He was always willing to take on any project and solve it systematically. For example, sitting with me on endless school nights and going over algebraic equations and never tiring, or being at the cabin and building a snowman, we would want to give up, but he never did. Moreover. I could ask Grandpa to come over and build me a simple shelf, and it would turn out to be a cabinet with stained glass doors. <laughs> I would ask him to help me in any arena in life, and his answers would never disappoint in the fact that he was ready to solve it with me together with grace and gentleness. We shared some special memories that would be passed on through the generations, such as going to the cabin that he built in Big Bear, teaching me how to fish, and cleaning the fish. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> Watching his, Turner, his favorite Turner Classic movies and turning to him to help me in the ER for our next patient because he was an excellent volunteer at the hospital where I work. And sharing stories of how radio recorders first started. 
And finally, how he met the love of his life, Evelyn, our beloved grandmother. Grandma, Grandpa was a fine, a, a kind and compassionate, generous, loving, and above all, the self, most self, selfless grandfather I knew. My family loved his visits on Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter holidays, when he got to stuff his belly <laughs> and take the leftovers and share that priceless wisdom with his great-granddaughters. His wisdom was profound because he was so intellectual about a multitude of things. Up until the end days, his mind was divergent in many ways due to his diligence and his quest for knowledge. I admire him immensely and aspire to be like him in every way. I miss him every day. Thank you. Hi. My name is Cindy, and I'm the most mature of the four <laughs> grandchildren. And I have been very blessed to have my grandfather for 53 years of my life. I was with my grandparents most of my childhood while my mother worked, my father through college. I spent countless hours lying on the floor of his den, uh, watching him move that reel to reel back and forth and listening for whatever it was that he was listening for. <laughs> then he would take that brown piece of tape and he would snip it, I guess, and um, put it back together and then whatever he was listening to was much, much shorter. Mm -hmm. I had absolutely no idea what he was doing, but I was with my grandpa and that's really all that mattered. As the oldest, I was lucky enough to have been with my grandfather while he was building the Big Bear Cabin. I don't know how lucky that was for him. Um, I recently was watching eight millimeter tapes of the cabin, and I can't tell you how many times he almost tripped over me because I was the shadow right behind him. Um, those are some of the fondest memories I have, is building the cabin in the evening, sitting cuddled up next to him on the slab, leaning against the cinder block, and just watching the sunset and drinking hot cocoa. As I got older, I had the privilege of accompanying my grandfather to work at Capitol Records, where I was always treated to lunch at the Brown Derby. Uh, the very first time Grandpa took me to the Brown Derby, we sat down, they brought us the menu, and there weren't any prices on the menu. So I had to out loudly ask Grandpa, where's the prices? And he just kind of snickered under his breath and looked at me and said, just order what you want. <laughs> so I did, and um, Cobb salad became my favorite after that. And uh, somehow, some way, I obtained that brown derby recipe from my grandmother, mm. grandfather. Don't know how I did it, but he did. I also went to San Francisco a couple times with my grandparents while my grandfather was on recording sessions. I'm not sure if it was Quicksilver Messenger Service or Joy of Cooking, but um, it was wonderful being up there with him in San Francisco. My biggest thrill as a young lady was accompanying my grandfather to the Grammy Awards. Um, for somebody in their early teenage years, that was quite amazing. Grandpa was not really one for all the glamour and the glitter and to be in the spotlight, but uh, he did a good job at suffering through it for me. <laughs> John Palladino. Son, brother, husband, father, grandfather, friend, colleague, mentor, engineer, producer. He was truly an incredible man, able to do anything he set his mind to. A legend in his own time, my hero. When I was asked to speak today and give some kind of insight as to the man he was outside of work, I put quite a few hours and thought into it. And this is what I would like to leave you with. John Palladino, my grandfather, was a very gentle soul. He never raised his voice, and he never had an unkind word to say about anyone. He genuinely cared about everyone. His patience was infinite, 
and his kindness was unmeasurable. He's taught me many things throughout my life, but the one lesson, the one most important lesson that he left behind as his legacy was how to love unconditionally. Thank you all for coming. Just a, a couple of final words here, and that is thanking everyone again who came for all of your thoughts, for all your comments, and for the tribute to a man that we obviously extremely loved and respected and remember for the rest of our lives, certainly. And what we'd like to have happen now is just everyone, please go off, enjoy yourself, share the anecdotes. I know, unfortunately, there, there wasn't enough time for everyone to come up and speak, and I'm sure everyone in this room has some snippet uh, or anecdote about John that they would love to share, but now's the time to do that, so we encourage you to please go share, especially across the aisle here, you know, the Capitol folks and the family, and enjoy those anecdotes and take the rest of the time to do that and to remember this wonderful man and uh, also help yourselves to the light lunch that's still back there. So again, thank you all for coming. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I was supposed to have Stephen come up. All right. Uh, I, I just wanted to, uh, wanted to uh, say that uh, uh, the photographs and so forth uh, that are here will be available for, uh, for everyone to check out. Um, I wanted to uh, make sure that we got a group photo, however. So when we get done with this, with the help of uh, the studio crew, we're going to move all the chairs over to this side of the room, and we're going to line up up against the partition there so that we can get a photo of everybody who's here. So please uh, hang around for a couple of minutes while we get set up to do that. And I just wanted to leave you with a final quote uh, that, uh, that John gave me during our interviews. And I, I, this really sums it up to me. He says, and, and I think for a lot of us too, to me, anyone in the music business, when I started, was very fortunate. He said, that kind of career and being in that environment, it was like, how can I enjoy my work so much and still get paid for it? Mm -hmm. There's no better job in the world than one where you can make music and get paid. And I think that says it for John, that says it for, for a lot of us. So thank you very much for coming. It's, it's wonderful to see you guys here, and please uh, hang around for the photo, okay? Thanks very much. You know, I don't come from a technical background. It's crazy, you know, because I admire you guys. That, I mean, you could go in and, you know, damn near decide and do.